So the 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 the, the main the main base in the pasuk bossy legani achosi kala that I uh, that I come to my garden, my sister, my bride, that the uh, the Abish invites a yid, a Jew, to come to his garden, and the uh, the explanation of gani is to my to my uh, to my to my chupa, to my my uh, my marriage. That within this world, a Jew has the capability of bringing God, of having a inner relationship, an, uh, 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 a, 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 a relationship with the Abish on a much higher level than he would have uh, with uh, with without with a soul that wouldn't come into a body. Why? Because the Abishta says, "V'asu li mikdash." The verse says, "V'asu li mikdash v'shachanti b'seicham," and you'll make for me a mikdash, and I will dwell in you. B'seicham. It says b'seicham in them. It doesn't say in it. It doesn't say you'll make for me a tabernacle and I'll dwell in it. It says I will dwell in them. Why? Because the uh, the purpose of the building of the mishkan. The Friedrich Rebbe said, the people of the Babich Rebbe, the purpose of the building of the Mishkan was to bring godliness within every single human being. Why? Because when the, that was the way it was to beginning. In the beginning, when God created the world, God filled the world. And then came seven sins, starting off with the sin of the, of the uh, tree of knowledge, Adam and Eve. And they pushed away HaKadosh Baruch Hu from one level to another level, to seven levels. And then came Avram Avinu, Abraham, and ultimately seven great leaders after that, till Moshe Rabbeinu, who was the seventh leader from Avram Avinu, from Abraham. And Moshe Rabbeinu brought the Shechina by building this Mishkan, by building this tabernacle. Moshe Rabbeinu brought the Shechina, the, the presence of God, revealed the essence of God in the world, and that was done by the building of the, of the Mishkan. But it's, a, but it's a positive commandment that every Jew needs to do. It's one of the 613 positive commandments. V'asu li mikdash. That we have to build a base on mikdash. We are obligated to build a base on mikdash. Yeah, but the, but the word, verse says, b'seicham, in them. So that teaches us not only are we have to build a base on mikdash, a, a physical temple, we have to build some physical temple within us. So what, how do we build a, a physical temple within us? So we must say, the Fidik Rebbe says, that that is the connection. We have to learn the prototype of how to build a base on Migdash within us is the, is the Mishkan, is how to build a Mishkan in the desert. So if we know how to build a Mishkan and what is the meaning of the Mishkan in the desert, then you can learn how to build a base on Migdash in yourself how to create this, temp, this tabernacle, this place of God, so to say, that God can come in within me. So the Rebbe says, So that's what all the Fidikin Rebbe explains. The relation of Hashem's essence is brought into the Mishkan and into the Jews to the service of Tzadikim, which in this concept refers to every Jew. That's what we had the last week. We were all Tzadikim. We had all the argument yesterday. <laughs> who draws down the level of he who dwells forever, exalted and holy by serving Hashem with his kafya. Oh, so that's what we ended last week. That the, the Rebbe says that, that va, why does it say Vamakul? It's, it's not the, the, the Fidik Rebbe. It, it says a statement. It's a Pasik. It's not, the, it's God says. And my nations are all Tzadikim. So you can't argue with a Pasik, right? No, you can't argue That's with it. That's the people who are not religious. That's a dikim. That's a dikim. That's a dikim. No question. So says the verse. That's it. The question is, the question is, the question is how is it possible? <coughs> not the question, not, uh, the question is not, 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 not uh, how, uh, why are they not a The question is, how is it possible they're not a The verse says it's a How is it possible? So that that they are not tzaddikim is a shtus, is crazy. We're really, because naturally, we're amechulam tzaddikim. Naturally, we're all tzaddikim. Why? Because we all have an neshama. That's number one. Number two is, 
because each and every one of us can do his kafia. Each and every one of us can do his kafia. His kafia means we can, uh, we can s control ourselves. We can all have the power of self-control. And in Chassidus, in Kabbalah, you have two things, a skafia and a shapcha. Skafia means that we are, where, I, where I control myself, I overcome things, I overpower my evil inclination, I overpower my taivas, and a shapcha is where I transform it. So self-control and transformation. Transformation is, is, is a, a harder thing to do, but self-control, everybody can have self-control. Mind over matter. So my, most of us think, what's so great about a skafia? What's so great? Really, the, the point is to transform it. Why do we make a big deal? So you're self-controlled. Yeah, you're going to self-control again, you're self-control again. And then, yeah, but it's like a baby steps. So what's the big deal? Isn't the most important thing his hapcha, where we change the thing and we transform it? So the Rebbe says regarding his kafia, so therefore the Fidik Rebbe brings down a Zoya that says when one causes sitra achra, which is the evil force, to be subdued, his kafia is subdued, through his kafia, we control it. What happens? So the Zoya says, Godliness of the glory of the Holy One, blessed to be He, is revealed in all worlds. We have an unbelievable revelation of godliness when you do a skafia. Not a sabcha. When we do a skafia, when we, when we can self control, we overcome the desire, we overcome the, 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 the taiva, the, 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 the gashmi, and we, 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 we control ourselves. When we have maya shalat alev, mind over matter. We have a revelation of God that's unbelievable. And, and, and the desire says it's revealed in all worlds. It's an empty expression. The kula almen. We have, that's the Hebrew, that's the niche, right? The kula almen. The word in, in, in Aramaic, in the desire, istalik yekara de kuchabricha be kula almen. Yekara means the glory. It's yekara, it doesn't mean it's even. Higher than 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 dust on earth. It's a yukara, it's the, uh, the the light of God. What does that mean? So the Rebbe says specifically the phrase reveals in all worlds. Reveal reveal is, is refers to the level of godliness. We're referring to that which is revealed, not even where the godliness is revealed, which would be referred to the Malakalam. So we're revering to we, well, we learned in many my mother already many discourses of the Rebbe, that we're looking for an Eir Ein Saif. We're looking for not an Eir Memala, right? There's two different lights. There's Eir HaMemala. There's the light that comes into a vessel. The second you say there's an Eir that comes into a vessel, then you have a limited Eir. Because if it comes into a vessel, then it has to fit the vessel. If it has to fit the vessel, then the Eir needs to be limited. So there has to be some limitation. Then you have an ur that doesn't fit a vessel. It's higher than a vessel. That's why you see the difference between a mitzvah and a, and a non-mitzvah. So the, each one has a greatness, a vader. What's greater? To do the mitzvah or not to do the vader? Not to do the vader. Why? Why in one level is not doing the vader greater? Because doing the mitzvah, every mitzvah, has to do with the Indian Gashmi, has to, it has a time and space. I put on tefillin with a certain kind of a concept, as it has to be a certain dimension, it has to be a certain time. So every mitzvah has its time and has its space. So that's why a mitzvah is Eir HaMemala, really. The mitzvah is the way the Eir, where the godliness comes into the world. An Aveda, the concept of a sin not doing a sin, what happens? Not doing a sin means not doing it. I didn't do it. I did nothing. I saw the I saw the, 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 the non-kosher food and I did I had a taiva. I decided I could have eaten it. And I didn't eat it. Right? So what did I do? Over there I brought about an ur which has no vessel. It's a higher ur. It's an ur that has no vessel. And therefore it's uh, you bring down an ur has a uh, 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 You bring down an ur that, that, that surrounds the world, encompasses the world. And the truth is, that's the concept of, of what's the concept of, uh, of a skafia? Holding yourself back. 
I didn't do nothing. I didn't do it. Right? I could have done it. I had a type to do it. I had the capability of doing it. I could have done it, but I didn't do it. I held myself back. It's more difficult to do the first step than the second step. So each one has its level. Each one has its greatness. The, 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 the content of a mitzvah, of a positive commandment, if I didn't do it, of Azmane Bata Karbane. If I didn't put on tefillin today, I cannot fix it. <laughs> I cannot really fix it. Because uh, I didn't put on tefillin today. Uh, I didn't put on tefillin today. Tomorrow I can't put on tefillin twice. So uh, if I lost a mitzvah, like I, I didn't give tzedakah today, I can't give tzedakah. Uh, giving tzedakah tomorrow twice is not going to help today. Today is gone. Of his money, the time passed. Bato korbane, the carbon is gone. The sacrifice is gone. I have to do the mitzvah now, right? Because the mitzvah is connected, where the oil comes into the physical, and this mitzvah is connected to a time. You can't. You're not obligated. Can you say, can you say okay, I'm going to give it tomorrow or today? No. You cannot do that. How can you do that? The time is gone. You don't have money. Make a pledge. Yeah, make a pledge. But uh, on Friday, I can give like double. Interesting pledge. question. <laughs> you can pledge on Shabbos. You can pledge on Shabbos. Well, you, what you should do is, if you can't give money, do it to in a different way. Go help somebody today. You know, tzedakah does not only mean money. Tzedakah means go help somebody today. That you could do today. Do it today. Yes, tzedakah comes in a fight. I have to do a physical action. So do you, you can do a bicep tzedakah on Shabbos. Help somebody. Help somebody. Help somebody. That's something else. I'm talking about money. Talking, you know, on the bicep Shabbat. Yeah. Yeah, your wife does that hopefully. Hashem did. Hashem did the same with the man. <laughs> okay. You always buy a Leah, but you're not, but the, the pledge, it's a pledge. Interesting. We gotta find some guys buy all We have to. Okay. The question could a pledge. We'll have to, uh, we'll have to look that up. We'll have to look. But I would, I would tell you, uh, even though Misabi could do a pledge, but there's no comparison between doing the mitzvah than pledging for the mitzvah. So doing the mitzvah is really, uh, you know, the Rebbe instituted a called Keren Hashanah. Keren Hashanah was a, a Keren. He said everybody would give, everybody should give to this Keren, that they would give tzedakah for you every day. So whether you gave tzedakah or not, this Keren this, this, uh, would give tzedakah for you so you're covered. So you can give a penny a day, and it's like three dollars and sixty-five cents for the year. You can give two pennies, two pennies, you can give eighteen cents a day, whatever you want. So everybody gave you give to this to this to this uh, to this uh, fund, and this fund gave for you to Daka every day. What? Yeah, of Daka. Karen is a beautiful thing. I do it every year. I give to this Karen, and this this fund, and I know I'm covered whether I give to the Pushka or not. Tzedakah has been given to me for me today. It's automatic. Eight, I give 18 cents a day. What they did? $60. So 18 cents a day. I'm covered for the year. I have the no worries. I know every day Tzedakah has been given for me. Why don't you start a Karen Hashanah? <laughs> 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 I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I'm not in competition with the Lubavitch. You know, we should give to that. He established that uh, fund, and we should give to that fund. Yeah, it's a beautiful yeah. thing. Right, I'm saying so. Shabbos, Shabbos, uh, <laughs> right. Al Tareb explains that the Moshev Teiru Torah Shabbos 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 I mean, Pashas, it works, because we do that. So, I mean, Pashas, it works. The question, how it does, I don't know, I'm sorry, we've got to find that out exactly. But, uh, but a Pashas, it works. But a lot of people can pledge, and then you can chase them for a year for their pledge. That's so <laughs> 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 yeah. It's like, it's like when you're praying, and I want to give 
felt that. Right? Right. Especially for sexy cats over the money and I took it aside. Now I can't do it like that because I'm not gonna give it to the store there so if some guy was sitting over there next to me, I gotta give it to her, you know, wherever it is I ended up landing. But you really like Sometimes like it takes, you know, right. a whole day, you know, if you're traveling between here. But really, you could do that. You could do that. Because, but that's terrible. You could do it by separating it. You take the dolly, you separate it. I said, oh, that's what I did. And that's it. So, and that's so you already took it. So you're not saying you took it already. You took the so dhaka and you separated. This is going to be for the dhaka. So that's like a truma. You have your, your truma, you separate it, and then you give it to the coin later. But it's it's truma already. I took already truma, so and I counted it as dhaka. Yeah, that's right. So I separate it and I give it to the doctor. I hear about the judges in America and Europe. In, in, uh, Europe, in America, they kiss with the hand instead of the mouth. In Europe, they kiss with the mouth instead of the hand. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's, okay, we have to, okay. So uh, the, when a yid is, is, is holds himself back, he, holds, he doesn't do... <laughs> He doesn't do the Avedo, he saw self-control. That brings down an Erd Hasev of Kalam. That reveals an Erd, and how, is the, 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 how does the Pasuk, how does the uh, Medrash, or the, I'm sorry, the Zohar express itself? That it comes down Kol Almin in all worlds. It reveals in all worlds. That's, so in essence, the difference between Malak Lam, something that comes down into the world, that means because every single place has its, its, re its revelation. Every single situation has a different revelation. Then we have a revelation that comes down to all, wo all worlds equally. And that's Eid HaSev of Kalam, the, the light, the, the light, the encompassing light that has no vessel, that comes down all worlds equally. The difference is that we find that in the Chassidus and al Tareb and Tani says the same thing between Ratzin, the will. That Ratzin, the will, has no place in the body. Right? It's all over the body equally. The will of a person. A place where the doctor of a person, that's where he is. Because it has no vessel. It's all encompassing. While everything else, intellect is in the mind, and emotions in the heart, actions in the hand, etc. Everything has its own place and everything has its own, own vessel. But Ratsa in will is something that encompasses all places. There's no mockery, there's no place where will is. It's all over. So that's the difference between Eid HaMamala, in a way, the, the light that encompasses the world and the light that diffuses in the world. It's an effusion of light. It's a light that has no, pers no specific place where it goes. So in essence, the Zoya says that Eskafia, Eskafia, that my Eskafia, every Jewish person's Eskafia, his little Eskafia, his little self-control, you have a greater light in, in, in infusing in the world. An unbelievable oil comes to the world by my simple hiskafia. So I shouldn't diminish my little self-control. My little, even though, even though I'm saying, oh, you're so, uh, you had self-control. I had self-control. Why, why, why was our great self-control? We controlled ourselves that we didn't have uh, some gashmias. We controlled ourselves that we didn't uh, do this little thing. What's the big? No. The Zoya says that's a big thing. Don't think that it's a little thing. You're build, you, are, you, are, you are building by doing that in essence. I'm building a Mishkan. That's the way I'm building this Mishkan. Is by this Eskafia. By this Eskafia I'm building this Mishkan. And I shouldn't think that it's a simple thing that I'm doing. It's like a grain of sand. You know, if you keep adding everybody. Yeah. Yeah. But over here it's even more. That's like, that's, 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 this is unbelievable, the Zoya says. By this little scapia, I am partial bringing an ur that's lemaila mekelem. I'm bringing a light, I'm bringing a spiritual, a spiritual power to the world, to myself, that's even above vessels. It's an ur saver kalam, it's an infinite light. Whether I see it or not. So that the God that should be revealed in all worlds equally is the level of saver kalam, which is referred to the ultimate level of godliness which is equal and inc compatible to all worlds and is therefore revealed equally within the, all of them and is this level which is drawn into the world when a Jew serves Hashem following the model of the Mishka make for me a Mishka 
and my essence will dwell within you. And I will dwell. Right? What is I? Who am I? Vishachanti, and I will dwell. Whoa, that, that's a higher level of godliness. That's not Yudke Vavke even. That's an essence of God. It doesn't say, who is I? Again, I. Who am I? I am, who, I am, I am something that, is, that I can't give you a definition. I'm above defini definition. I am who I am. I am who I am. I am who I am. I am, who I am. Whatever I am. Correct, because you can't give a definition. There is, there is God's definition. Even, even God. Right? No, God does give you the, the yeah, seven names. Yeah, there's a limit. No, there are seven names. So we give God a definition a little bit. Yudkei Vavkei, Elikim, Adnai. We have definition. So God's not all of them? Seven names. Yeah, the seven names. Seven. So there's no seven names like of defying God? Well, you can't not define God. But, uh, but it gives some kind of definition. Chesed, Gevura, Teferet. Why the seven names? Seven emotions. So we give God the concept of chesed. We give God the aspect of gevura. But it's our expression, not the The Abish is above definition. But in the Finn Shem, you limit It's a shalom to limit the Abish there. You can't limit God. But on the other hand, we do limit God. We say by putting on tefillin, we bring God to the world. So you're limiting him. Tefillin, again, has a definition. There's a definition to tefillin. There's a name to it. There's yeah, a place to it. That's the Yudhra song. Whatever, but ultimately you're bringing God into a time and space. I can't put on tefillin at night. Right? If God has no definitions, why can't I do it till at night? No, because we're bringing God into the world, and automatically by me, Zalman Bukit, bringing God into the world, I automatically make a definition. But at the same time, I realize that God is above definitions. Chas shalom. God forbid to say God is, is a definition. God forbid. You're not going to say that. That's making the shuyas. You're not going to make, the, you're not gonna make God into a, a time and space. God forbid. You can't make him into an aspect of a, of a physical entity. That's what, what the world did ultimately. And they created God into a physical dimension. And a Yid, a Jew, is not going to do that. Okay. Yeah, if we have Tfilin for during the day, what do we have Tfilin in the morning? To sleep. <laughs> <laughs> to learn Tait, actually. It says that why you learn night. This is learn Tait. The best time to do, learn Tait is at night. That's why Tadika, we go to sleep early. They wake up at midnight, and they will be up a whole night. The best time to learn Torah is at night. Not a, that's, that's, that's the, the best time. You learn, 100%. Right, so the learning Torah, that's the best. How about to waste the whole night and uh, sleep it away? So uh, wake up at midnight and sit to learn Torah. But that would be very difficult, because you have to have six hours of sleep, so you've got to go to sleep early. And, uh, but wake up at night. Actually, the Gemara says every, every uh, hour before midnight is like two hours after midnight. We all go to sleep late. We've got a problem. We're going to get schlaf and we're going to sleep after midnight. It's not out of us. And, uh, and, and, and that's, we're, we're losing our sleep. We're tired. We need to go to sleep before midnight. Go to sleep. But uh, tonight, these days, you can go to sleep at 7 o'clock and wake up at 1 o'clock. And that's what you should do. All right. They used to go to sleep. Yeah. Correct. So now we're up against, well, we go to sleep at 1, 12, 12 o'clock, and then we're shocked that we're all tired the next morning, even though we got up at 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock. Why? Because we're not having REM sleep, you know? We're not having deep sleep. Because we're waking up already. Okay. This is not a, this is not a class of sleep. <laughs> so, uh... So right uh, in this level, which draws down the world, where the Jew serves Hashem, with the model the Mishka makes me. Okay. The Fidik Rebbe then continues to explain three aspects of the Mishkan, which teach us how to serve Hashem in this way. The Rebbe says, the Fidik, this, this is still on the previous Lubavitch Rebbe's Maimah, the first, I think, first five chapters, I think. And uh, this, we're going to knock it through. So the first aspect the Fidik Rebbe explains in the service of is Karbonus. So the most important service in the Mishkan was a service of a carbon, a sacrifice. Which one of the service, meaning the most significant service in the Mishkan, is the, the Mishkan was built to bring a carbon. That was that's based on the Rambam. That the Rambam says that the most important part of the Mishkan, especially to humans, to, to human beings, was the carbonus, was sacrificial offerings. My said carbonus, to bring a sacrifice. 
speak of sacrifice. Service, the carbon, is reaches the essence of God. As we don't realize the greatness of a carbon, the secret behind a carbon. But in a carbon, you have, ah, the Zoya says, the secret of carbonus ascends to the secret of insight. If you understand the sight of a carbon, the meaning, right, most of us are uncomfortable with carbonus. It sounds like a, like a, like a yeah. you know, butcher shop and uh, offering animals. It sounds uh, a little bit, you know, scary and bloody. But the Zoya says, no, there's a great secret, there's a great hidden power in Karbonis. And you find that the Ebesha says expression by Karbonis, no, not any other mitzvah, Nachas Ruach. The Ebesha says it's a Nachas Ruach. I get a pleasant, that's, you find that even by before the Mishkan. Well, I can't do it. No, we could, we daven. We realize our davening is our Karbonis. That's Karbonis. No, no, davening. Tefillah is Karbonis. Tefillah b'mok and Karbonis tikna. Tefillah was established instead of Karbonis. Like the beautiful Mayim of the Rebbe this week, I believe in, Dvara, in the Dvara Malchus, that the, the Mincha, that's why Mincha, the, the, every carbon is called a Mincha, and uh, the Mincha, uh, and, and we find that we have the one Tefillah is called Mincha. <laughs> so we have Mincha is called uh, the Tefillah Sa Mincha, and that's why it says that a Tefillah Leon of a Tefillah Mincha, because out of all the Tefillahs, Mincha, the, uh, the, the uh, afternoon service is even greater in the concept of carbonus. Why? Because you're stopping in the middle of the day. That I mean, that's famous. You stop in the middle of the day, you daven. Which is, shows the, the aspect of carbonus that I'm, I'm changing, I'm, 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 I'm doing something within the day. I'm stopping. I'm stopping. Shachas I could do in the morning, Maidav I could do it late at night, Mincha, especially in the winter. It's uh, especially in New York. <laughs> you got to do it at four o'clock. It's at four o'clock is uh, mincha, uh, you, whether you whether you like it or not. You can't change the time because four o'clock, middle of day. Now you have to daven. So it's it's uh, mincha. Is the power of, of karbon it shows the aspect of karbonus even more. Why? So when a person service of Lashem, that ascends in ascend ascend of karbonus refers to refinement of his natural abilities. By using them for the, so that, uh, for the service of God. So that's the carbonus. Carbonus means, the secret behind carbonus is that I'm taking something of me. My, my carb is a behemoth. I'm taking a behemoth. So I'm not just taking an animal, I'm taking my own behemoth. <laughs> that's why you're not allowed to steal a carb. <laughs> <laughs> right? You can't steal somebody else's behemoth. You have to give your own behemoth, your own animal, and you've got to bring it as a carb. You got to take it and bring it as a sacrifice. You're taking your behemoth <laughs> and you bring it as a carbon. That's really the, the kavana. Take your behemoth. What, what is your behemoth? My nefesh of Bahamas, my animalistic soul, and I'm bringing it as a carbon. Right? I'm not getting rid of it. I'm not destroying it. That's the opposite. I'm bringing it as a carbon. That's the highest level. I can destroy it. I can, I can run away from it. No, I don't. I take the behemoth. That's really, right? I'm, I'm using the behemoth. That's the whole concept of, of chsidus, you know, to take the behemoth, not to run away from the animal, not to run, a, not to diminish the animal, not to, to destroy the animal. That's the opposite. Lahakrib. To bring the animal. That's the, the, pers- the concept of carbon. The carbon is to bring it closer. I thought that was, uh, if you bring the behemoth, that's what will happen to you. If you then sacrifice for your sin that you did. That's what the behemoth that, that, you bring. That's at a very lower level. On a very higher level, the carbon is to bring closer to God. Not that I'm, uh, I'm getting killed or I could have been killed. That's a, that's a lower level. Loyal shlomim. You have a carbon chatas. But, uh, but, but uh, there's carbon oilers, there's carbon tummy, there's carbon shlomim, there's hundreds of carbonists. There's carbon pesa, there's carbon chagiga, there's hundreds of carbonists. The, the, and even the chatas. The chatas is not like, oh, I'm, getting, I'm, I'm dying. The chatas is that I'm, I'm, I'm taking away the negative. I'm killing the negative, so to say. Why? Because I want to I w- I come closer to, to the positive. So something, I got to sometimes get rid of the ra to come closer to the good. So it's not just getting rid of. The purpose of the getting rid of is to come closer. That's the whole purpose. 
So it's not just, oh, the, I have to kill, I have to, no. The purpose is to get rid of it. This is the first And step. this is the concept. Of, so really, even the katas is also to come closer. It's all to come closer. We are, we are, the khatas is I've gone away, I, I, or I've added, like the concept of, of Gehenim in general. People think Gehenim, oh, it's a terrible thing. It, no, it's, it, no you, it, the Gehenim could be a positive thing. I cannot go into Gan Eden without Gehenim sometimes. So I need to, why? Because I added things to my life. My, nefesh, my, my godly soul it got a little bit uh, dirty, got a little bit uh, unclean, and needs to be cleansed. So I want it cleansed, because if it's cleansed, I have the capability of going, going into the, the place I need to go. So it's a positive thing. It's not always a negative. We don't have to look at everything as a negative. Not everything has to be a negative. Why does everything have to be a negative? So Gehenna um, could be a positive thing. It's, it's I'm going through Gehenna because I can... Gehenna is associated with suffering. I know, but the suffering is for good. Let me say a person needs to go to an operation. <laughs> it's suffering, <laughs> right? It's suffering. You take a person, you cut him up. He has to suffer a little bit. But Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. Right? It's worth, it's worth it sometimes to suffer a little bit. Because you, know you, know, you know the outcome. Imagine if you didn't know the outcome. You know the outcome. I'm going to go through the suffering. Because it's gonna, I'm going to have a beautiful life. Baruch Hashem. Thank God. They can give you an operation today. And you can live. Right? Who's going to say, no, I'm not going to go through the suffering. I, 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 no, it doesn't make sense. So any normal person would say, you need, to, you need to go through a little bit. No pain, no gain. You need to go through this little suffering because there's unbelievable joy that you're going to have. Right? So, so it's the same thing. You need to go through this little suffering, go ahead and, because it's unbelievable Ghanaian. Right, 100%, 100%. What do we say in video when a person, I've done video many times, you know, with people. It says, this should be a kapara. My, my suffering that I'm going through should be my kapara. I shouldn't have to go through any more kaparas, right? This suffering, in this world, should be my kapara, right? So if I, I'm suffering, it should be a kapara. It's, yeah, kapara, it's good. So it's good. It's good. It's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. It, 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 you have to look at it in that way. That's why the Gemara, it's hard for us to, the Gemara says, Sadiqim A righteous person accepts pain with love. Because he realizes, there's no, David doesn't give pain for no reason. Well, he wants to pain a person. He wants to suffer a person. No. It's, 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 for, the, it's, for, it's for the betterment of the person. The person realizes it's for his betterment. The Rebbe once said, we say the example of an operation. You take an, a primitive person, you bring him to an operation room, they'll, they'll start screaming, you're cutting a guy up. What, are you kidding me? Are you, are you serious? You're cutting a guy up? You're, that, that's barbaric. But any, any civilized individual will say, Baruch Hashem, right? Thank God. They can, they, can, they can do that and save a person and give him life and give him, uh, and give him more life, give him a better life. So, so the avoda of iskafia, the, the union of ma'aseh karbon, is where I have to subdue myself, is a is a positive thing. I cannot look at oh, but it's a painful thing. It's 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 it's, 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 it's so, you know it takes work. It takes avoda. It takes no. It's a pain. It's a, it's an unbelievable positive thing. It brings about a much greater. There's a much greater uh, strength. There's much greater uh, capabilities after that. By, by, by that, by going through that concept. It's a much greater, and it's that big gashmi, it's the way that in the real world, and it's, that, and it's surely like that, but ruchni, it's surely like that in a spiritual sense. So the Abish to put a person in this, le, in this, this situation. But it's better not to go. A hundred percent, but we're human beings. Okay. And, 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 and it's better, it's better to be, uh, it's better, sure, it's better to be godly and to be healthy and never do an Aveda. Yeah. But it's not the real world, okay? It's better to live in a world that you never have to go to, you never get sick. But is that, that, that's, not the, that's not the real world. Why? Because we eat things and we do things and we, and we uh, and, uh, automatically it, it has an effect on us. That's life. It's the way it is. Or the Abish that gives it to us. 
if you cannot associate it with it, God gives you these challenges. It's, it's a challenge in life. So the word, the, 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 the concept of when a person serves Hashem, yeah, the kabbana is for the refinement of his nature. The scent of the kabbana or the equivalent within a Jewish service of Hashem then draws down godliness into the physical world. This is drawn by the godliness that the physical world is resented by the phrase used describes Hashem pleasure. That's why when it comes to kabbana's and the sacrificial offering, it says, God says, you'll see you mention by Yik, you'll come to Leviticus. God keeps on saying by a carbon, I have a smell, a beautiful smell. It's pleasant. A pleasant scent. Referring to eternal appreciation, nachas, that his command is, uh, is fulfilled. Nachas ruach lefanei shamaiti v'nasir etzoyni. I have a great nachas, a great pleasure that I've asked and my will has been done. Why? As you have expression in Mishnah. It says, asay etzoyni, etzoyni, That's really the ultimate. The ultimate is that I do my will like his will. That's tough. That takes a scaffold, right? That takes subduing oneself. That takes giving of oneself. That's carbonus. That's a real carbon. When I, when I do the, my, when my will, when I put aside my will, I, do, I force my will to do the will of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that is a carbon. So that's davening. What's davening? You know what davening is in Hebrew? Tefillah, the word tefillah is a concept of davening. It's Hebrew. Tefillah means secondary. I put myself aside. I say that everything comes from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Even though I worked, it's my accomplishment. I, I, I. And then Davening says, no. I say to God, it's not I. It's you. That's a carbon. <laughs> That's the real carbon. That's the secret of the carbon. That I say to the Avish, to everything that I, that I have done, it really comes from you. All my gosh, all my success, it's really you. It's really you. I'm accomplishing your will. I'm not accomplishing my will only. I didn't go out of work all the day and accept only for my Ratzin. No, I'm trying to accomplish your Ratzin. What's your Ratzin? To bring godliness in the world. And I'm accomplishing it through my Avedah, through my service in the world. I'm accomplishing your will. I can go through life and it's all about me. I can go through life and be successful and it's all about me. And I can go through life and be successful and it's also about God. And that's a carbon. The carbon says, I'm a kind of the gashmis. I'm a kind of my own gashmis. That I make my will the ratzon of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, The will of God. So I, in essence, I make my day. And all my ways, I see God. All my actions also has L'Shem Shemayim, the sake of heaven. That's a carbon. That's the real carbon. To make the Torah God's, that's easy. It's his to begin with. It was always his. Torah was always his. It was never mine. But to make my actions, to make my karma, my physicality also his, that is the union of a karma. So to dive in now and to be able to dive in and to take my time and dive in and dive in a little bit with a little bit uh, with a little kavana, that's the beauty of a karma. Because I'm taking my time, I'm taking my my nefesh uh, Bahamas, my my capability, my my own tithes, and then putting it a little bit in the l'tzav Hashem, and that's the secret of a carbon. That's why tefillah b'kabbat kabbalas tikkun. We're going to do right now. Shall have a wonderful day, beautiful day. We shall continue. Home run, home run.